Hello, fourth graders. It's Mrs. Fondre here. Today, this week, we are going to be talking about lines and how we can use different types of lines to make art. Uh, I think most art actually kind of starts with a line because if you want to draw or paint anything, you have to put your pencil or paintbrush down and move it. And that makes a line. And lines can do a lot of different things. So um, for our project this week, we're going to do uh, a three-dimensional, which means it pops off your paper, a three-dimensional project, all right? So it's going to look maybe a little something like this when we're all done. And it actually is a piece of art that pops off the paper. Okay, so um, what you're going to need for this pro project, you are going to need um, a white piece of paper to do most of the work and the art on top of. And you're going to want another piece of paper that is a different color if you are able to get it. Um, if you don't have colored paper at home, you are more than welcome to take a white piece of paper and color it. You could do crayons or colored pencils, but you really want it to be a solid one color, loss of color, okay? Um, I recommend not using markers if you have to do this because if you use markers, you know your paper kind of gets a little soggy and wet and a little difficult to work on, okay? So what you're going to be doing, I can move my paper down here. You are going to start with a pencil and you are going to draw a large organic shape, which means it has no straight edges. Like this piece of paper is geometric. It has straight lines, corners. It's very square. It's a rectangle, right? But an organic shape has kind of wavy, lumpy, bumpy curves to it, okay? It almost looks like a cloud a little bit. So draw a really big one to fill your space, all right? Um, you don't want to do an itty bitty one because that's going to be a little difficult and try to not make these lumps too skinny and narrow because cutting it out later might be a little bit of a challenge. So when you get to this point, I want you to actually divide up these lumpy spaces into, I would say, four to eight sections. So all I'm going to do is kind of start in a corner. I'm going to go one, two. I'm going to kind of count and divide it up into sections. Whatever you want, how many you want. I'd say less than 10 though, because it'll get a little crazy otherwise. So one, two, um, three, four, let's do five, and six, and seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I went with seven. So. In each one of these blobs, you are going to come up with a different type of line, pattern, shape, um, ways to fill the space. And you notice in mine, I don't have a whole lot of white colors. So when you're doing this, I would start with pencil first, just in case you realize, oh no, I didn't want to do that or I made a mistake. So I always like to start with a few different types of line. So maybe I'll do zigzags in one of them. Remember you want those nice pointy lines um, and then think, oh, maybe I can color those in later. Okay, maybe you want to do some spirals where they curve on each other. You could do more than one, two. You could do double spiral, Whoa! runs into each other. Um, maybe you want to fill a space with checkerboards. I love checkerboards. I think they're really fun to make a nice pattern out of. And you can do a checkerboard. You see, I'm using curved lines for that too. You can do a curved checkerboard. Um, and I mean, thinking about different, different thick and thick, thin and thick lines, that's a mouthful to say this morning. You could do a thin line, and maybe a thick line. A thin line, and a thick line. Okay. And it's all about filling these areas up with different kinds of patterns, okay? Um, well, we could do some wavy lines. We haven't done any of those yet. And it's just kind of about taking your time. We're doing neat work today. We're not trying to do anything crazy. We're really just thinking and being thoughtful. Um, it is always a bummer when I have students work on this project and they just rush, rush, rush. And then it doesn't look as awesome as it could. Oh, I don't like how that wave went. So I'm gonna erase it. Been making all of them go down and then up. Okay. And, um, you can even just fill things in with polka dots, maybe. I don't know. I'm coming up with different shapes and sizes. And um, there is no right or wrong way to do this as long as you're taking your time and being neat. Okay. 
maybe for this one, I want to do a whole bunch of triangles. So I'm going to make a rectangle and I'm going to put a zigzag inside of it. So it has triangles in it. Maybe I want to do some lines this way too. I don't know. It's kind of up to you to figure out how you're feeling today. So I think maybe I'll put more triangles over here. There we go. I dig it. So once you have it all penciled in lightly and you kind of have a general idea, then you want to color it in. Okay. Um, I would recommend markers for this because I know y'all love markers. And the best thing about markers is they're really, really bright, saturated colors, which is really bright colors. So then when you're all done, this thing is going to be popping with colors. Okay. So color this before cutting it out because otherwise, like I said, markers make it kind of weaker and it's a little flimsy. So at least when this would be all colored in, your area around it would still be white and easier to cut out, okay? I know you know how to color, so I'm not going to waste your time with showing you how to color, all right? But it should be very neat. You shouldn't see much white. should be not scribbly, right? Um, but when you're cutting this out, I'm going to move this back down to my desk so you can see what you're doing. I find it helpful when you're cutting out uh, curvy lines to actually move your paper around a lot. So I twist my paper while I'm cutting. My scissors doesn't really move a lot, but just the paper does, because I'm using my right hand to cut, and I'm using my left hand to turn the paper, all right? Just be careful not to get your other hand too close to your scissors, because no one wants to cut themselves. It's not ideal, okay? You would hurt your finger, and then you gotta get a bandit, and then you're set, and then I'm set. Okay, so really take your time, stay on the line. We're just going around the outside. I almost every year have someone try to cut into their blob and cut on the lines. Don't do that. We don't need that. Okay, just the outside line. All right, now that I got this all cut out, here is the secret to making it pop. Okay, you're going to need some tape for this. Masking tape works the best, but if you only have scotch tape at home, that works too, okay? So, what you're going to do, you're going to take some masking tape, and you're going to rip probably an inch or two, and then you are going to stick it on the edge of one of these curves, okay? So if it sticks out a little bit more, I'm going to stick a piece of tape underneath it. So this is the sticky side. Okay, you can see it's stuck to my finger. So it's the sticky side up. You're going to want to do this in a few different spots. Okay, um, I'm going to take another one. And when you rip tape, you want to pinch your two fingers together with your thumbs and you just move one of them to rip it. Okay, it's good practice to get that done at home too. Uh, I'm going to pick maybe this lump over here because it sticks out pretty far. I'm going to lift it up and I stick it's so the sticky side is up. Okay, kind of seems weird right now, but I promise it's going to figure it out. Do one more, pinch, rip, and then I'm going to stick one. How about I go over here? Okay, of course, yours will be colored in and beautiful and popping really nice, all right? But here's what you're going to do from here. Grab your second piece of paper that's colorful, or if you colored it, lovely. You're going to put that down in front of you. What you're going to do, start with one of these pieces of tape and kind of bend your whole paper underneath it and stick it in the middle somewhere. Okay, so that's going to be stuck right where it's at. You can use your hand underneath here to kind of press it down. Okay, from there, take one that's further away. I'm going to go with my right hand. I'm going to bend it and as I bend it, you know what? It pops up. And to keep it pop up, you just stick that tape down and press it in. You can see it's starting to get a little airborne here, it's starting to float. So my last piece I have, I'm going to tuck it under here and do another one. Now as you're doing this, you're like, oh, maybe I want this side to pop up more too. Sure, do it. Just grab another piece of tape. And if you're like, ooh, maybe it's popping up too much. Like on this side, I got a huge popping up. Maybe I want to lightly peel it off and I'm going to move it. Okay, so don't push down too hard until you're really happy with where it is popping up. Okay, so um, like I said, yours is going to be beautiful, colored, wonderfully, masterfully at the elementary level. Okay, and you're going to have a piece of art that is literally popping. It's popping off the walls. All right, so um, if you have any questions,
questions, free to email me or to leave a comment in this Google Classroom. Um, you can submit projects right in this folder that I have created here. And I'm looking forward to see what you come up with. All right. Happy creating. We'll see you next time.